In this section, we'll try to understand a route filtering in BGP concept. Now, the first thing what we'll what we'll learn in this video is we'll try to understand what is exactly route filtering. And if, if I talk about route filtering concept, it's more similar to IGP what we have learned in the basic CCNP studies. So anyway, I'll, I'll quickly give a overview of what is route filtering and what exactly it is going to do. The overview of the route filtering. And then I'll, I'll explain you some couple of examples or scenarios when and where route filtering is more applicable in BGP. And then probably the third thing I will, I will explain you some of the methods, some of the different kinds of implementation of route filtering. So let's get started first with what is exactly route filtering. Now route filtering concept, as I said, it's more similar to your IGP route filtering. Now by default, if you configure a BGP on any couple of routers, I have some couple of routers here and I want to ensure that I'm advertising 10 dot network here and I want to make sure that this 10 dot network should get advertised to router B. Let's say this is router A, B, C, D, but it should not get advertised to router C and router D. So that's what we call as route filtering. So now either you can implement uh, outgoing direction or you can even define rules saying that any update, maybe 40 dot network, it should go to C router and B router, but it should not get into the BGP table of router A. This is what we call as uh, inbound direction. Now you can apply just like ACLs, we can apply either inbound or outbound. When you define outbound, which means the routes will not get advertised outside to this specific neighbor. And when I define inbound, it will, it will be advertised by router B, but the router A is not going to install those routes into the BGP table. Now this is something more similar to what we have learned in the basic IGP route filtering concepts. Okay, so I'm not getting into much more detail. So I discussed the same thing in IGP as well here. Now the next thing, when and where this is applicable. The next thing we'll see a couple of scenarios where BGP route filtering is more applicable. And the first scenario, if you remember in, in the basic BGP studies, we have learned that whenever I'm connecting to my autonomous system number and I'm running BGP and this is my autonomous system number, either I can exchange the complete routes or I can, I can just specifically receive only specific routes. And for all the remaining routes to reach internet, I can have a default route configured because by default, whenever you configure eBGP between any of these two routers, whatever the routes of ISP is going to maintain. So ISP maintains all the routes on the internet. And I want to ensure that the ISP do not advertise each and every route to my specific autonomous system number. Now, why I don't want, because I don't want any overhead on my router, because if all my routers start installing the routes from on the internet or from the ISP, now my BGP table is going to be very big and I really don't want. So in this kind of scenarios, what I can do is, the service part of what you can do is, you can just filter the routing updates, all the routing updates, except a few routing updates. Maybe you want to reach specific networks. You want to do some path manipulation. Maybe you want to reach 50 dot network, 60 dot. Maybe you have some servers on the internet, or you you want to access some specific networks, and you want to do some path manipulation for that. So now only specific routes will be advertised, and more specific routes for all the remaining routes, or for all the remaining routes, we we just configure filtering. Either you can apply outbound or I can apply in of my autonomous system number. So generally the customer is not much experienced in using BGP. So probably we don't do much on the customer end. So the service forwarder will handle these things much better than a customer. Now this is one kind of scenario where we can apply some route filtering, which is more common here. And there's one more scenario where you can also use route filtering is Again, I'm going to take the same scenario here. I got ISP one and ISP two. Now this is my ISP two. And in this scenario, now most of the service porters do not want to propagate the routes from the customer, from the one service porter to another service porter. So let's take an example. This ISP is advertising some routes to the customer. And in my autonomous system number, I got, I'm connecting to two different ISPs, ISP one and ISP two. And the service portal do not want to, uh, do not want them to advertise whatever the routes received from ISP one, it should not get advertised to ISP two. 
Now, if that happens, uh, anyway, it doesn't make difference much. But if that happens, what happens is uh, you you are advertising the routes from this side uh, from ISP one, and it's going to my autonomous system number, and it goes to ISP two again. So, which means to reach some specific networks, maybe fifty dot network. Now, this ISP two is receiving two routes. One route is this direct route, and there is one more route via like this. Now, maybe it is going to see the autonomous system hops. Maybe this is eight hops. And maybe the route from the customer may be just five hops. Now, based on this, ISP two is going to use the shortest autonomous system path information. So maybe it it will it is going through the customer to reach that specific networks. And my customer or my autonomous system number is going to become as a transit for all the traffic. Now, which means which I really don't want. Just to avoid this kind of scenarios, what we we'll generally do is uh, the service provider will ensure that any routes. Whatever the routes coming from ISP one, it will be received by the customer, and those routes will not get advertised back to another service provider. If that happens, probably uh, there is a possibility that my autonomous system number may act as a transit. And and one one more scenario where we can also apply some route filtering in BGP is like in in your network you are using some private addresses as well as you are also using some public addresses for. Some public servers on the internet. Now, when you are, you might be advertising both the networks in BGP, but when you are advertising these routes to ISP on both the sides, you want to ensure that when you are advertising, we advertise only the addresses which are allocated. Sorry, not private. It has to be only public, and we want to ensure that we filter out all the private addresses when we are advertising to ISP because internet do not recognize uh, any of the private IP addresses. So that is there is also one one more scenario where the PGP uh, route filtering is more applicable. So in all these kinds of scenarios, we can use any of the PGP route filtering method. Now, there are a couple of ways in doing uh, implementing this route filtering method. So either you can use something called distribution list, distribution list by using some ACL. Now what I can do is I can match all the networks whatever I want to deny. In uh, I can write an ACL and I can match all the networks. I can simply say deny, deny whatever the networks we have, and then finally I can say permit any inside the ACL statement. Or if you have more permit statement, you can simply say permit, permit, and by default, and then you can say deny all, something like this. So when you apply filtering, it's going to only permit or deny the permit the routes whatever is defined in the ACL. Now similar way, either you can use distribution list or you can also use something called prefix list instead of ACLs. So prefix lists are more uh, more efficient way of uh, filtering the routes because prefix lists can match the network based on the slash value. So that is one advantage we get when you compare with IP prefix ACLs over prefix lists. Sorry, uh, prefix lists over ACLs. So now in prefix lists, individual entries can be easily edited or deleted. That is one advantage we get. Apart from that, prefix list is like a tree structure. And it is not scanned sequentially, so which means it is going to uh, have some less overhead on on the routers because ACL works in a sequential order, but here it is not like that. And one more advantage we get is IP prefix list matches based on the slash value. Now either you can use any of these methods, or even you can use some route map statements. We can also use some route maps, and to match the networks again, I have to use either. Distribution list or prefix list. We can also use something called BGP communities. Now, BGP communities. If you remember, we we discussed. Uh, I discussed much more in detail regarding this BGP communities in a separate section. You can use some well-known communities like No Export. When you say No Export, it will not ex advertise those routes to external autonomous system numbers. So, No Export, No Advertise. Some of the BGP community attributes you can use, or you can also use. Your own defined community attributes. It's it's more easy easy way of filtering the routes, and apart from that, you can also filter based on the autonomous system path information. Now, by default, any BGP update, it's if it is advertised, it's going to advertise the network with AS path information like AS two one hundred two hundred three hundred I. Now, using this AS path filters, I can match the autonomous system path information in that BGP update. By using something called regular expressions. So regarding this AS path 
uh, filters using B regular expressions I have discussed much more in detail in a separate section so this is something much more discussed much in detail in a separate sections and then PGP committees also I have discussed in a separate sections much more in detail so now probably in our next sections in our next videos probably we'll try to get into some uh, BGP route filtering methods by using distribution list or prefix list and route map statements.